What's up, people? Welcome back to the BCMA Podcast. It's your boy, Lucky from Lucky's Muay Thai, and it is episode 20. This is the Black Clover Martial Arts Podcast, and if you like this show, please elbow that subscribe button and uh, teep the like, share with your friends, let everybody know that um, I'm out here putting out this content, just trying to have some fun, talking some crap with you people. Um, I've had some great guests on, some doctors, some former fighters, some coaches, and we have more great guests coming. I have a big guest Oh, to the heavens will happen uh, at the end of the month. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, Halloween's coming. I'm not sure what y'all are doing. I'm kind of curious, man. Drop me a comment. Let me know. Are you guys dressing up at your gym? Are you dressing up at home and trick-or-treating in the houses? I mean, in the, uh, in the rooms in your house or in your apartment? Are you going to the neighborhoods? Are you hitting a party? Um, I know COVID's got everybody doing all kinds of things a little bit differently. So I'm curious to know what everybody else is doing. Um, drop me a comment. Let me know what's going on. Otherwise, let's go. Um, in this episode, let's first talk about the kick, right? All right. This kick was done by Joaquin Buckley at uh, UFC Fight Island 5. And it was done against Impa Kasingani. I think I might have got that right. Anyway, um... Dude, I love this kick so much. It is such beautiful, beautiful technique. Uh, Kasangani parried the kick, which was also great. But then he just stood there, uh, which allowed Buckley to adjust his feet, leave the ground, and turn it into a turn, jumping, turning sidekick. Something to that extent. Now, what I'm hearing and what I'm reading is that this is the knockout uh, of the century, right? Or the best knockout ever. Or, I mean, I've heard everything. Is it the best knockout of the century? I don't know, man. I have some, I have some great knockout finishes in my mind that I love. And so I was curious to, to know what you thought. Is it the best knockout of the century? Is it the greatest knockout ever? I mean, I don't think so. Is it a beautiful technique, super high level, a fantastic knockout to see? Hell yeah. Do I want to see those often? As often as possible. Um, but let's keep it real. Uh, I've seen similar techniques, obviously, in other martial arts, Taekwondo, seen some freaking crazy techniques that are, you know, double spins and jumps and all this. So this is the most spectacular knockout ever. I mean, I wouldn't go that far. Best knockout of the year. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I saw Raymond Daniels at glory do a, he's actually on my list. So might as well, let's just go, let's just stay right here. Raymond Daniels in glory kickboxing, who comes from a, uh, what is it? Point style fighting, uh, uh kick stuff. I'm not sure exactly what you want to call it or what it's called, but he's got spectacular legs, right? So in his fight, Jumping, or first of all, lead leg side kick into 360 back kick, jumping and spinning, right? So let me try to explain this better. He pushes his opponent to the, to the ropes, which I, I hope, I, if I have a video, I'm going to play it. Don't tell no, shh, don't tell nobody. But he leads his opponent to the ropes, slides in with his lead leg side kick, leaves the ground, the lead that side kick hits the opponent in the body, leaves the ground, turning 360, hits him with the other foot in the jaw and knocks him out. Now, is Buckley's knockout as good as that one? I don't know. I felt like it was a freaking fantastic knockout, but man, look. He did, Raymond Daniels did his kick seriously on the fly. Uh, not that Joaquin didn't, but because, um, what's his name? Kazangani held the leg for so long, it allowed Buckley, who's a high-level athlete and obviously a high-level martial artist, to adjust his feet and apply the technique. Um, in Raymond Daniels' case, he just slid in and threw it. I'm going to slide in with a side kick, jump, spin in the air, and hit you with the other foot off the 360 with another kick. And this one's going to the jaw. So, which is the most spectacular? I don't know. I don't know, but it's dope, and I know everybody was like, yeah, Dana's going to give him $200,000. I don't know if he did. I saw the video where he was like, yeah, they wanted me to give it, or I thought I should just give it to you. 
but I never found out or heard if he actually gave it to him or if he just got the 50. So, um, I guess I should pay better attention, but brother, I'm busy. All right, let's go, man. So in this episode, we just talked about the kick. We talked about Raymond Daniels, who's on my list, but these are just, uh, five finishes that I love, uh, five knockouts or five KOs, five, whatever. These are finishes that I love. And I hope that you like them. If you've seen them, uh, comment below, tell me what you thought when you saw them, because most of these I saw when they happened. I didn't go back and watch these on video. These were video or these were like in the moment that I saw them. So that was also the great thing is that I've been around watching these fights for so long that I have a pretty good library of, of KOs and things and uh, instances that happen um, that I keep in my brain. So number one on my list, or not number one, but one of my favorites is, come on, man, Anderson Silva versus Vitor Belfort. Vitor Belfort was a machine in his youth and in his second run, right, in the UFC. He came back and everybody was excited for this fight. Um, people really thought that Vitor was going to rush Anderson, put those hands on him, which Vitor does, right? Vitor is super fast with the hands, uh, has great ability. Uh, his his jujitsu is fantastic. So this was a fantastic matchup and everybody was looking forward to it and nobody knew what was going to happen. And obviously Anderson Silva had already had a run, um, and, you know, it's bound to happen sort of for a lot of fighters. It's, you know, you fight long enough, you're going to lose or people are going to expect you to lose. And I think a lot of people expected Vitor to, you know, go out there and, and had a nice chance of uh, taking out Anderson. But Anderson had other ideas. So if you remember this, Vitor had been rushing Anderson quite a bit. He'd been, this was still early in the fight, but he had been sort of blitzing him and trying to catch Anderson on the back step and moving backwards. Uh, Anderson being a southpaw finally got a, a moment where they were just sort of posturing and moving their, their hands and their heads and right there in sort of the middle of the cage. And Anderson either led him to believe he was throwing something low or throwing something to the body, which, you know, clearly he's capable of off of, you know, from any position. And Vitor dropped his hands just a little bit. And it allowed Anderson to shoot, you know, basically a snap kick or an up kick. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, a teep to the jaw. And dropped Vitor like it's an accordion. Whoop. And he jumped on top of him. I mean, look, the fight was already over. He jumped on top of him and finished him. But that KO for a long time was like, holy shit. Uh, who's going to top that or who's going to do whatever. I mean, I'm not, this isn't on my list, but you know, um, Anderson and Leo Machida are friends, right? And they train together and they're, they've been friends for a long time. And if you wonder who's going to top this, as I said, this isn't on my list, but, uh, coach Randy Couture versus, um, Leo Machida. Leo Machida went straight karate kid and basically through, the same kick, right? Sort of a snapping or an up kick, but, you know, straight crane style. <laughs> um, and that was spectacular too. I mean, you're Randy Couture versus the Dragon who had just sort of, you know, made a huge impression in the UFC. And like, I mean, you know, these finishes go on and on and they cross different boundaries. Like I said, Raymond Daniels was on this list, but that was in glory. And I always say, like, listen, you know, I, I have nothing against what people call casuals. A lot of these people that come into the sport of, of martial arts or come into mixed martial arts or come into martial arts, right now they're coming in through as fans through mixed martial arts. They're not coming in as fans of karate or taekwondo or just jujitsu or just this or that. They're coming in as fans as MMA, in, of MMA and UFC happens to be the you know, the biggest MMA organization around. So most people know the UFC. They came in when, you know, Ronda was the, the champ and talking, you know, all this stuff and she was huge. So it brought a bunch of fans. Connor came in, obviously that brought a bunch of fans. So people may not know about other organizations that existed, existed either alongside the UFC during the same time or um, before the UFC was around. So there's a ton, a ton of crazy finishes and great finishes. I suggest if you have not seen, 
you know, K1 Grand Prix or Glories or, you know, Prides or Dreams or like there's so many organizations and so much um, material out there and content out there. You can go look up fights forever and there's so many great fighters and a lot of people call that a lot of people may even call legendary that you don't even know existed. Um, so I, accept, I suggest you do, do you go do your homework. Sorry. Um, all right, here we go. I get excited about this stuff, man. Uh, let's go back to the UFC. So Raymond Daniels, obviously I kicked it off with him, even though he was on my list later. Uh, Anderson Silva with the up kick for, from, to Vitor Bell. It's not an up kick. Uh, we'll say T to the jaw of Vitor Bell for. Let's stick to the UFC one more time before we move on. And let's talk Edson Barbosa versus Terry Adam. This was a striker's, uh, masterpiece fight, right? So we wanted to see this because these are two pretty high level strikers and this fight proved that right they started out and they're just they're banging but they, they're not doing they don't look like brawlers they are technically sound fighters and they are both doing work and at one point I remember watching and being like man this is you know I don't know how where it's going to go is Terry Adam going to do something you know fantastic is Barbosa going to do something fantastic and they're both striking really well and then Edson Barbosa hits the sickest, sweetest, most crisp um, wheel kick. I mean, at that time, I mean, that people had seen. I mean, I know that I, when I saw it, I was like, oh my. Terry Edom froze. He hit him with the wheel kick and literally Terry Edom's whole body froze. And he just went back, straight back, landed like that and stayed like that. Um, that wheel kick, you know, it set off a bunch of wheel kicks. It really did. I think a lot, I mean, just the same way the teep to the face from Anderson Silva set off a bunch of front kicks. Everybody's throwing front kicks. Um, that wheel kick set off a bunch of wheel kicks. And then people that you wouldn't expect to throw wheel kicks started throwing wheel kicks. Junior Dos Santos over Mark Hunt. Uh, you know, they're doing their thing. And Mark Hunt is not a guy that gets taken out easily. Yo, Junior Dos Santos. Wheel kick. Um, hit him across the top of his head, out, gone. So, like, you know, the influence that a lot of these kicks and things have on other fighters is evident when you haven't seen them as effectively done as you as you might have at that moment. So, Joaquin Buckley's um, kick was so effective that you're probably going to see a lot of people trying that in the future. And you've seen people, I've seen people do it in the past. Um, Edson Barbosa's wheel kick against Terry Adams set off sort of the wheel kick, um, where people felt a little bit more comfortable doing it. I don't think that people don't practice the techniques in the gym. What I think is usually, uh, one high level athlete, either male or female does a wheel kick or does a technique and other athletes that know that technique start going, oh man, you know what? I can do that. I do it in the gym all the time. For whatever reason, they feel more confident in, you know, going for it. And, man, all for the better, right? We get to see some fantastic knockouts. And, you know, you can't ask for more than that. That's what most people ask for anyway. So let's keep going. <sighs> You've heard me say this before, but Janet Todd should be a freaking U.S. star. I've said this over and over. I'm going to mess up this name. Janet Todd fought in one championship against Etrina Fenderyava. Something like that. I think it's, that's pretty close. They're pretty evenly matched too. Um, the thing about Janet Todd that I love is that, first of all, she's very technical, um, very smart. She doesn't waste a lot of energy. She throws with good, with bad intention and she is a dog. So when I say that, I mean that you're not going to scare her or, or or press her in a way that she's not going to be able to respond. She is not the type of person that looks like she's been pushed around a lot. So in this fight, she's fighting a um, one of the best female Muay Thai fighters, right? She's got a lot of accolades. She's um, a little bit bigger. She doesn't look as strong, but she does more than just a Muay Thai style, right? So she does do Muay Thai, but she adds a lot of spins, uh, switching stances. So that added a little bit of more danger to, you know, Janet Todd having to walk into spinning back fist and spinning kicks. And, um, in fact, I think 
Vin, Vinoyava was using some of those spins to enter the clinch in like weird ways. So she'd spinning elbow and then, or spinning back fist and then reach around and grab clinch. And I think because of her height and her length, she thought maybe she was going to be a little stronger in the clinch. But without a doubt, Janet Todd controlled the clinch for as long as this fight lasted. So let's get into that part. Janet Todd was landing pretty good. And Vinaya was landing with decently as well, but not with as much power. I mean, I think she was doing a little bit more in the, vo in the way of volume. But yeah, Janet Todd threw a sharp jab. Strong cross to the body, right? Then Yava, I think, tried to throw a low kick after that to try to, you know, get get some return fire going. Hold on. <laughs> I love y'all. Thank you for sticking with me. Um, Janet Todd then goes right back with that strong jab. And I think Vin and Yava thought that the punch was coming to the body again. And Janet Todd lets off this kick that ended with a, I mean, it wasn't like a, wasn't a kaboom, but it was a. It was loud. <laughs> Not only was it loud, but it took Vinayaba a minute to even realize what happened, or a second to even realize what happened. Like she got kicked with that kick, and she turned. She took like one or two steps, and just sat down. She was like, "Yo, I'm. I'm not sure. We're just. I'm just gonna sit down right here. I mean." It wasn't spectacular in the sense that it was this crazy technique, but in my mind, it was spectacular because she threw this beautiful jab cross to the body setup and then went jab high kick right after that. And it just wasn't going to be defended. And it was just beautiful, man. And the, the finish on the kick was beautiful. Everything, the technique, everything was gorgeous. And I think to me, a lot of times, that to me matters more than the finish. It was like, how beautiful was the technique when they threw it? And and I think that technique, that setup was so nice and the, the sound and even the, the actual opponent, the way the opponent went down, she didn't just fall, right? She had to take a step and kind of realize what happened before she collapsed. So uh, shout out to Janet Todd. That was in one championship. I'm telling you, if you haven't seen her fight, go watch her fight. She should be a star in the U.S. and everybody should be watching one championship anyway, because if you ask me, man, there are some super high level strikers that are just not getting enough credit. And I mean, martial artists in general, there are people over there from all around the world that are incredible, incredible to watch. And I hope that, you know, you take the time to get off the UFC for a minute. May, you know, bounce through Bellator and all that. Try to get over to one. Check out some of these other uh, organizations because the fights are definitely worth watching. All right, what did I put? Okay. Is that five? Anderson, Raymond, Edson, Janet Todd. Dang, that's five already. This is the fifth one. I ran through that rather quickly. All right, here we go. In 2009, K1 had a Grand Prix. Grand Prix means you're fighting multiple times in a night. The last two fighters left of that night were Badr Hari and Overeem, who at that time was Uberim, and that was from eating horse meat, he said. Lots of, lots of horse meat. Um... Anyway, it is hard to understand or comprehend the size of Overeem at that time versus what he looks like now versus what he looked like before that in Pride. So go back and look, sort of look at the evolution of Overeem's body. If I have, if I can find a picture for that, I'm definitely going to put that up because it's outlandish. The crazy thing is, if you're going to fight that guy at that time in his career as the way he was. You got to be a crazy mother. I don't know if my phone's going to stop. How long do these things last before they cut off and I have to restart? Okay, so I had to stop and restart. I don't know how long these things last, so I don't want to get cut off. So I just cut myself off. All right, let's go to it. Grand Prix, uh, K1 Grand Prix 2009, Badr Hari with Overeem. They are exchanging over and over. Um, Badr, for whatever reason, is getting the best of these exchanges, although Overeem is 
strong as hell. I mean, he's he's not. He already beat Botter once, and he knew. You know, if I touch, if he touches anybody, he he clearly was so big, so strong, and very skilled that it was going to be a hard time beating him. And you know what? You needed to beat a guy like that. You needed to be insane. And guess what we had? We had Botter Hari, and Botter was. I don't call Botter insane, but there were moments in his career where logic just didn't make sense. So, you know, stomping on, stepping on people's heads after he knocked them down in championship fights, uh, teeping people back, back down to the floor while they're trying to get up in other championship fights, and apparently a lot of outside the ring activities that were a little bit, you know, maybe too much. Uh, some assault charges and that kind of stuff. So I think in order to be, <laughs> in order to have beat, uh, Overeem during that time, you had to be a little bit out of your fucking mind. And, uh, to his credit, Bader Hari was. Now, the reason why this is on my finishes is not just because of who he finished, but I tried to stick with kicks on this whole thing. And Overeem had already been knocked down. This was it. This was on the end of the round. And Botter just started throwing, 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 throwing uh, after Overeem got up from a, from a knockdown and hit him with a head kick that made him do the, like, uh, what's that, those blow-up air dolls at the, uh, at, like, the used car dealers. Yeah, man, he kicked Overeem in the jaw, boom, and made him do one of these numbers like he was trying to sell used cars. So, um, I like Botter, man. I like the way he fights. I, you know, all that outside the ring stuff is, you know, all that stuff's always beyond me. I just can't ever figure it out. But, that kick was a freaking beautiful finish. It was one of the most amazing finishes for me. And, uh, Michael Chappella was on the call. I don't remember who else was on the call. But, it made the, the knockout so much better because the call on the knockout was just as good. God, I want to play. I'm going to, I'm going to try to sneak and play these things, some of these things. So, if I did, please don't tell anyone. Um, anyway, that's the end of that. So, uh, my top five finishes were Raymond Daniels with that lead leg 360 uh, sidekick, jumping sidekick to the face in glory. Uh, Anderson Silva over at Vitor Belfort with the front kick to the jaw. Edson Barbosa over Terry Adam with the spinning wheel kick in UFC. Janet Todd over at Trinkovan and Yava. In one championship with the beautiful setup and jab high kick. Jesus the Lord. And then the K1 Grand Prix 2009 with Overeem versus uh, Badr Hari with that beautiful kick to finish. Michael Chavello on the call and everybody went freaking nuts. It was amazing. Um, listen, if you're in Miami and you want to learn Muay Thai and you want to get in shape and you want to have some camaraderie and you want to have some fun and you... Uh, Want to come by the gym and check us out? Drop us a line. Uh, you can go to the website and do that, www.luckysmt.com. And you can just fill out the form there. You can drop us an email there. You can just, you know, leave us a message. You also get a free workout that I posted there. It's been there for a while, so go get it. I mean, it's free. Just fill out the form and you get it. Um, you can also hit me up on Instagram, at Lucky's Muay Thai. I always try to put a little clip here and there of the show. So if you get a chance... Go follow us on uh, Instagram at Lucky's Muay Thai. Also, I want to thank everybody for um, subscribing. That if you've subscribed, I want to thank everybody for the love I've been getting for the characters and the show and my commentary and my guests. Man, listen, some of the guests have gotten a lot of uh, watches and you know, a lot of views. Sorry, a lot of views. Um, and I'm super stoked that you guys have taken the time to watch these guys. Please, if I posted their Instagram or anything, make sure you go follow them. If you're in their area and they own a gym or you've heard something, please go check them out. These are all, you know, good people that, um, you know, I loved having on the show and I love asking questions too. So, that being said, I love you too. This is episode number 20 of the BCMA podcast. That's the Black Clover Martial Arts Podcast. It's your boy Lucky from Lucky's Muay Thai. I'm out. Yo, they still didn't do nothing about the killers that killed Breonna Taylor or the people that set it up or anything like that. So we got to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do. It is voting time. Make sure you're either early voting, your ballot is being dropped off directly, or you are in line all day, all night, whatever it takes to get your vote in because there is some suppression going on. I don't know if it's a lot, but it's some. And uh, we need you. Everybody needs to get involved. 
Uh, don't listen to anything on the media or whatever. Go study your own stuff. Pick your own people based on what you think is good for your family and vote. Take part in this political process. And it is a super American thing to do. Um, be a patriot. Spend your money in the places that you're supposed to spend. Make sure you're taking care of small businesses. And obviously, love each other. I'm out. Peace.